Hi, my name is Samuel Ginsberg. I work for UCT's Electrical Engineering Department and my recent invention is a part of the Lumkani Shack Fire Detection System, which is an early warning system for detecting shack fires. And the, the part of the invention which we are interested in is the what we call the sniffer system, which is a device which listens to detectors living in shacks and relays that information to our servers, allowing us to get that information onto the internet and send out alerts. The sniffer device is a, an internet gateway, so all the fire detectors speak to each other. As soon as you install them, they look for other detectors around them and start talking to each other, communicating with each other about whether there's a fire, whether there's a problem that people need to know about. The sniffer device takes that information, it listens in to the fire detectors talking amongst each other and it communicates that back to our computers which allows us to do things like mapping and sending out alerts to warn people of the fire. The whole detection system was inspired by the fact that I was listening to the news broadcast while I was driving along and just thinking that it's, it's a tragedy that people are losing um, lives, homes, possessions in these fires and that there should be something that one could do about it uh, technologically to make this a less of a problem for people. Um, it all flowed from there um, by, by thinking more carefully and by engaging with communities about what would really, really be useful. The first challenge in the inventing process was to understand very carefully um, and very thoroughly what exactly the problems are, how these fires start, how they propagate, what it is that people fear about them, how people um, really lose, lose lives and property in these fires, and, and what do communities that are facing this problem really want. It's one of those problems where you have a superficial understanding from what you hear but to get a deeper understanding of what happens in these communities and how to best fight it is something you can only really get when you speak to the community. So that was the first problem. There are technical challenges. These fire detectors need to be very robust. They need to be well adapted to the environment. They need to be as cheap as possible. And they need to provide as wide a range of services as possible while at the same time taking into account people's response to technology and how it affects their lives. Yes, I would definitely get involved with communities very much earlier in the process. So, in this case, we sat and we thought about it in our isolated ivory tower kind of way for a while and we had our own ideas. But it took us far too long to engage with communities. And that was lost time. That was time that I regret not having got, gone into the communities, sat with people much earlier in the process and understood their needs and desires. So that's something I would definitely do differently. My immediate anticipation is that I want to see a drastic reduction in the number of homes and lives lost. So to my mind I will have succeeded when one can start seeing year on year that the statistics of loss of life and loss of property go down. The shack fires really, it's nice to have an idea which sounds like it might work, but when you see the numbers reflecting that it has worked, that's when you can feel good about your invention. The most emotional moment for me was when we, when we prevented our first fire. We prevented our first fire actually only a few weeks after we'd installed the system in UT Gardens in Kailitsha. And straight away, within a few weeks, we got a story that someone had been in hospital giving birth and her neighbor had accidentally set fire to her shack. 
and uh, no one had noticed because the shack was unoccupied but the detectors went off and people came out to look um, and they saw the fire and they put it out and, and we saved a huge amount of destruction there. And it was, that was like a, a shivers down the spine moment just because you suddenly knew that you'd done something really useful. Advice for potential inventors. The, the inspiration for inventions comes with the problems you see around you. Um, we live in an imperfect world. There are plenty of problems. There are plenty of people who have difficulties that need resolving. You should be keeping your eyes open for those problems. Those problems represent opportunity for inventiveness, opportunity for innovation. Um, it's very useful to be able to look at a problem, be able to decide whether it lies in your realm of expertise, and if it does, then look seriously at solving and put some real effort in. I love the thought that I can, I can take this world, I can take things that, that other people see as insurmountable, these problems that people say, I just, it's a problem that exists, we can't do anything about it. And to rethink that, to challenge that, to say maybe this problem can be dealt with if one thinks about it creatively and if one comes up with something new to do the job. I think my biggest passion is electronic design. My, my biggest passion is this, this process you go through of taking a problem, thinking it through, understanding the issues, and then converting that into a sketch on a piece of paper, converting that into um, looking around for different components, putting those components together and ultimately forming a complete product from it. Thank you.